Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And if you're on Facebook, be sure to check out our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast, and we would love to have you there. And you know what? If you're in our community on Facebook, why don't you just drop in the comment section, like, what do you think about sin? Like, what, like, what is sin to you? Like, what what does that look like? And how has some of our readings affected you? Because some of these readings have been pretty tough when Isaiah yes. is talking about sin. So I'm just curious what you're thinking about it. Okay, so we today, we are reading Isaiah 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, and the first 14 verses of 63. <sighs> We're deep <sighs> into Isaiah, very deep into Isaiah. And today God is telling Isaiah that his people are hypocrites. They come to the temple. They seem to be delighted to learn his ways, but they are pretending that they want to be near him. They're even fasting to please themselves. So basically God is saying that his people, his created ones, his set apart ones, they're phonies. The heart behind what they are doing matters. And they seem, or rather, are they are going through the motions and he mm-hmm. wants them to right their wrongs. And and then if he they right their wrongs, salvation will come like the dawn, and their wounds will heal quickly. If they feed the hungry, help those in trouble, he will act on their behalf and their light will shine. He will guide them continually, giving them water when they are dry and restoring their strength. He goes on to tell Isaiah that his people need to keep the Sabbath as a holy day. And then, then he will be their delight and he will give them the great honor and satisfaction with the inheritance that he promised Jacob. Then we see more warning against sin. There's so many warnings in Isaiah. There's so many warnings in all of the major prophets and even the minor prophets. We're just seeing warning after warning after warning. And he's telling them what it, the sin, what it will do and how it will spread. And it's the sins that have cut the Israelites off from God. When sin is not dealt with, we know this, there can be no peace. And when sin is not what dealt with, then all of the sudden truth fades. And when truth fades from view, justice, according to Isaiah and according to God, is nowhere to be found. But so when it gets this bad, I mean, well, God says he will step in with righteous and salvation and vengeance and divine passion. And he says, my spirit will not leave you and neither will my words from this time and forevermore. The covenant that God makes with his people, how he promises an abiding spirit and an enduring word, God accomplishes his purposes in people and through all creation, through both the spirit and the word. And then we move to chapter 60, and chapter 60 is all about the future glory of Israel, when people from all nations will come to bless Zion and bless the Lord. And as I was reading this, I just kept thinking, this had to be such an awesome sight. I mean, like, put this in your in your mind, this is a picture in your mind, to see merchants from all around the world coming to Jerusalem, caravans of camels, people of Sheba bringing gold and frankincense, flocks from Kedar will be given to Israel and rams from Nebioth will be brought to God's altar. So you know that they didn't just like walk a block. They were coming <laughs> That's a from long afar. Way. Yeah. And then you have ships from Tarshish will come. And I would just love to see this painting because this would be an incredible painting mm-hmm. of just everybody flocking, like everybody coming to Jerusalem. And and I know that 
that there's there's times and people think that some of these paintings or some of these pictures are from various different time zones or time, different times in the past and future. But there was just, to me, it was like, oh, I could just see it all happening at once mm. and how beautiful, such a beautiful sight and such an example of God's power. And then we see a r- wonderful reminder that God will be our everlasting light. He will be our everlasting light. Like for me, I am someone who does not like the darkness. Actually, dark scares me. I will mm. admit that. Yes, I'm in my late 40s and darkness scares Michelle me. Michelle likes night lights. <laughs> I, do. I keep I keep a light on in my kitchen like like Joe's at asked me the other day, he was like, what is that doing there? And and it's been there for five months, the five months that we've been married. But I always keep a light on in my house. I just always have. And and so the the fact that he is our everlasting light means Mm. incredible things to me because I love light. I love Mm. light. So it we also know as we finish out chapter 60, he's going to redeem his people and it's going to be at the right time. And I think that's something that we need to keep in mind Mm -hmm. is that it's going to be at the right time. But we know it's true. We know it's true because he cannot lie. And he closes out the chapter by saying, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Yeah. And I love how, you know, you're talking about, I could just picture this. Can you imagine when I say Isaiah was getting these images or these visions that he had to write down? I mean, how overwhelming to even put into words what he saw. I mean, sometimes it's like, now, what is he trying to describe? Well, it must have been so hard. But, you know, we have uh, Isaiah 61 starts with the prophet speaking as with the voice of the Messiah. So, like, there's images, there's things he's hearing and he's putting it um, all down. And so I love this at the beginning of 61. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that the captives will be released and the prisoners will be free. And this is just such a beautiful proclamation of who the Lord is. And so this exact passage is spoken by Jesus in Luke 4, 6 through 18. And it was when Jesus went to Nazareth with his boyhood home, and they asked him to speak to the synagogue. And he unrolled the scroll and found this place in Isaiah. And he said that basically, he's like, this is who I am. This is me. I'm the Messiah. They knew that those were the words of the Messiah. And then Jesus spoke that to the people in his hometown. Um, and so Jesus made it clear who he was and what he came to do. And so I love mm-hmm. that he used the prophet Isaiah's words mm-hmm. um, to do that. And then the prophet further assures that they will be given a crown of beauty instead of ashes and joy instead of mourning, and that their ancient ruins will be rebuilt and restored, and that foreigners will shepherd their flocks and again, work in the fields and vineyards. Um, So then there's the prophecy of the everlasting covenant. And it says in verse 11, the sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with springs planting up. Again, in Isaiah 62, it's the salvation of Jerusalem. And it's talking about Jerusalem being a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. It will no longer be a deserted city, um, and but it will be beautiful, like a bridegroom rejoices over its bride. Uh, the Messiah will rejoice over Jerusalem. And then 63, there's the different side of the Lord. It's a majestic figure approaching Edom, splattered with red stains of wrath. I mean, that's like a picture right there. Can you picture this? Of course, this majestic Mm -hmm. figure, but there's red splatters of blood and wrath and the destruction. And it's the sign of judgment. So we see this new sign. I don't know if we've seen like that vivid of a picture Mm -hmm. when we seem like, yes, there's wrath or I will destroy you. Um, And so it just showed the children of Israel that he was for them even against their enemies. And so it, it just shows that this avenging and victorious warrior. Um, and so throughout the book of Isaiah, I started looking into this like, well, that's a new way to see God. I'm not going to list all of them. There are 29 different mm. um, attributes to God or ways that he is seen. So I'll just pick some. Um, the Holy One of Israel, the Branch of the Lord, 
a great light, like you were just mentioning, a wonderful counselor, a righteous king, um, a friend of Abraham, um, the first and the last, the resurrected redeemer, and then today and the avenging and victorious warrior. It just shows us that God is just showing layer upon layer of who he is in these images and these pictures. Um, but ultimately, like you're saying, Michelle, like he wants to bring the remnant. He, he's going to bring beauty from ash, ashes. He's going to um, heal and, you know, raise up those who are broken. And it's even in the midst of all the doom, there are these beautiful pictures of the Messiah coming to heal and to forgive. I love how you talk about layer upon layer, because that's that's something when Joe and my conversation after church yesterday, as we were talking through the sermon, I brought in um, just what we've been learning mm-hmm. about through Isaiah and through the other prophets. And I, I, t- I said, it's like we're seeing layer upon layer. And we know that whatever destruction comes then and uh, even now. Like whatever discre- dooming destruction were to happen, we know layer upon layer, like the more layers that are to this, the bigger God's glory is. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make sense in our minds why he's doing what he's doing. But we read earlier in Isaiah that his thoughts are so much bigger than our thoughts. His ways are so much more than our ways. And so there is, there's, there's layer upon layer of who he is. There's layer upon layer of our sin. There's Mm -hmm. just, there's so many layers of, of so many different things. Mm -hmm. And like individuals, all of us, everyone that's listening now, God is at work in different ways in their lives. Our mind, I think the more we dig into God's word and realize all these layers, and then that applies to each of us now, it's just like our minds are blown, which We will never be able to understand God. Um, Mm -hmm. But the more we understand, then the more we realize how much we don't understand and we can't even comprehend all that God is. Yeah. Yeah. He is so great. We're not going to comprehend it until, yeah. And I was going to say until we get to heaven. And even then, (laughs) we'll get a glimpse of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to see so much more than what we see now. I don't know. Maybe there's a scholar li- listening that's like, oh, no, you'll see a whole lot. I mean, we'll know, we know we'll see so much more and we'll be able to be like, wow. But to know the mind of God, I don't know. And maybe that's we'll just spend eternity just discovering yeah. more and more. Yeah. yeah. Well, we need to ponder that, I guess, a little bit. Take a break and um, get a cup of coffee or a glass of water. Come back. We're going to hear from our sponsor right now, and then we'll have the word of the day next. So stay tuned. Michelle, did you know that ChristianBook.com has been a trusted name in the Christian world of books and curriculum for 45 years? Trish, I hear some exciting news for homeschool parents. If you haven't gotten all your curriculum for the new school year, you need to check out ChristianBook.com. Actually, I buy from them every year, and I just got an order of some new math books. They sell over 45,000 homeschooling products. We're talking curriculum, unit studies, and lots of electives. Their summer sale is happening right now. You'll want to check them out today so that you can enter to win a $500 gift card that you can put towards all your homeschool needs and more. Just register christianbook.com slash daily. So thank you, Christian Book, for your 45 years of service to us. This homeschooling family and so many more really appreciate all you do. That's christianbook.com slash daily to enter and win a $500 gift card. The roof was completely gone. All of our memories being wiped away. The rain is what got 20 minutes of sheer terror. And you can feel it in your body. I watched the fire move down the canyon. The rumbling of the house. My son started screaming, we're going to die, we're going to die. In the name of Jesus, we are not going to die. At Samaritan's Purse, we bring spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. We go into dangerous situations because in disaster, in disease, in war, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, restore the broken. All who work and volunteer with Samaritan's Purse follow the example of Jesus. We go to serve, not to be served. And we go in Jesus' name. Join us at SamaritansPurse.org. That's SamaritansPurse.org.
The word of the day is redemption. So the first definition is an act of redeeming or atoning for a fault or or a mistake. Um, And the second one is deliverance or rescue. So these chapters, they speak of sin and the failure of God's Mm -hmm. people over and over. And then the judgment they will face. But the story doesn't end there. And ultimately, like we were just saying, God's um, enduring mercy is greater than the sin. Redemption is atoning for a fault or mistake, which is the things that his people make. Um, So even though we're the ones who make the mistake, it's God who does the redeeming. Like we can never redeem or make up for our fault or mistake. So Mm -hmm. redemption comes only from God. And we read, I read earlier how Jesus acknowledged that he was the Messiah. He was the one that was coming with deliverance and restoration from this passage in Isaiah. And so Jesus comes as a rescuer when there's no way we can ever redeem ourselves. So then it I came to think, like, how do we approach redemption? And Michelle, at the beginning, you said, like, what do you think of skit sin? Like, how do you, uh, reading our, our through these chapters, what, it, what does it make you think of? And it, I started doing that with the redemption. So often we try to work really hard to redeem ourselves, but we still come up short. <laughs> and redemption's out of reach, so we're never going to get there. Then there's sometimes some people, and I've been there before, where we thought we've been too far gone to be redeemed, that we're mm-hmm. unredeemable. And again, it's out of reach because we can't get there. Um, but both of these focus on redemption as our responsibility. Like, I have to do this. And as my husband, John, and I were chatting about it, he says they're rooted in the same thing. Both are thinking it's on me to work out my redemption. But things change when we realize, like, it's not on us. It's about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that third avenue is realizing that we need Jesus. And then redemption through the Redeemer, Jesus, it comes, you know, he comes to us. We recognize it's out of reach. And that's where Jesus steps in. And he, like, closes that divide. He says, you can't do it, but I have already done it. I've already given myself and all you have to do is accept it. So, you know, I think so many times we do, we think, okay, I just, I remember thinking I want to be the perfect Christian wife and mom for Jesus. Like, like I could make up for the past. Or there's times as I was a teen doing my own thing, I thought, oh yeah, God doesn't even care about me anymore. But no, it was that moment of surrender. We're like, I need you, Jesus. And so I think we often look at our brokenness and failures, but instead Jesus said, I've come to the captives will be released. And that's how things change. Um, He is a compassionate God. He wants to change beauty into ashes. He promises that God's glory will fall upon us. We don't deserve it, but God is the God of redemption. And I just think that these powers are these chapters show his power and his power to redeem so beautifully. Well, and I love how like you said, redemption comes only from God. He is a God of redemption. He comes to redeem His people. Mm-hmm. And a few days ago, our word of the day was was tarnish. And mm-hmm. the last verse today, um, Isaiah sixty three fourteen, it says, "You led your people, Lord, and gained a magnificent reputation." And I was just like, in the in the side notes, I was like. He said his name would not be tarnished. Yeah. Like, like he's going to gain a magnificent reputation. He's going to gain this reputation through redeeming his people through mm-hmm. such hard, hard circumstances. I mean, redeeming his people because they had sinned against him in horrible ways. And yet, as horrible as those sins were, and as like, Many would be like, those are some unforgivable sins. Mm-hmm. And yet God was like, I'm going to, I'm still love them so much. I'm going to redeem them. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to bring them back to even better what they were before. And again, it all comes back to my name will get a mm-hmm. magnificent reputation. Yeah. And just that we have the chance to realize, like, once we get to the place where we're like, I can't do anything. And then just accept who God is and that he is our redeemer. But not only do we get redemption, there's that list of names. Like he's our mighty God. He's the all comforting God. He's the righteous king. He's the forgiver of sins. Like He's like, you get this and everything behind door number one, door number two, door number like it's so much. The redemption is, of course, for our sin to save us from eternal destruction, but also 
all the benefits of just having that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So important. Trisha, can you pray for us as we go about our day and that we Mm -hmm. would just live as redeemed people? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our redemption. I, I thank you that when we cannot do enough, be enough, um, give enough to earn our redemption, that you just step in and say, I'm here. And and even in places where we felt like this is unredeemable, like I cannot be rescued from this. Again, you step in, Lord. I thank you that we can turn to you. And I pray for anyone out there who has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, I pray in this moment they will understand your love and your mercy and grace and and be willing to open their hearts. And for all of us who have, Lord, let us just be so more, much more thankful today for that redemption. And we just thank you and praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Tomorrow, we are reading Isaiah 63, 15 through 19, Isaiah 64, 65, 66. Then we head back to 2 Kings, 2 Kings 20, verses 20 and 21, and 2 Chronicles 32, verses 32 through 33. And I want to take us, I know, I know. It's like, (laughs) with some. It, 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 it really okay. is. We're in the midst of some heavy reading and a lot of reading right now, but you are doing a most excellent job. So thanks yes. for keeping up with us. I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcasts without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you'll find other great podcasts that are definitely and guaranteed going to strengthen you in your walk with God. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Michelle, did you know that ChristianBook.com has been a trusted name in the Christian world of books and curriculum for 45 years? Trish, I hear some exciting news for homeschool parents. If you haven't gotten all your curriculum for the new school year, you need to check out ChristianBook.com. Actually, I buy from them every year, and I just got an order of some new math books. They sell over 45,000 homeschooling products. We're talking curriculum, unit studies, and lots of electives. Their summer sale is happening right now. You'll want to check them out today so that you can enter to win a $500 gift card that you can put towards all your homeschool needs and more. Just register christianbook.com slash daily. So thank you, Christian Book, for your 45 years of service to us. This homeschooling family and so many more really appreciate all you do. That's christianbook.com slash daily to enter and win a $500 gift card.